of those of those of the answers to the questions and that will last about 55 minutes and I would give the floor to Madam Minister if she would like to answer or delegate answering of those questions to members of the delegation and also to perhaps clarify uh, for members of the committee if if it is necessary Madam Minister I give you the floor Distinguished Chairperson, I would like to thank you once again. We're here with a strong uh, delegation. We're all here uh, with a very strong delegation at the level of DGs representing our country. I would like to first briefly describe uh, the general picture and then give the floor to my relevant colleagues. All uh, the international law and United Nations conventions uh, being a party to all of those conventions is our mission and to uh, reflect it in our international inter internal law is our main uh, objective and this is why we have uh, eliminated our reservation on uh, SEDAV and right at the moment we've started working on uh, our constitution uh, in a participatory manner in 81 provinces we've started asking our people what type of a constitution that they would like to have and we're now collecting their views i would like to give you an example of in 81 provinces we have asked our children what type of a convention they want to have we collected the views of our children and we have uh, reflected their views, the views of the children. And then we have submitted the views of our children from 81 provinces to the Constitution Drafting Committee, and we, will, we told them that we will be following it up. Right at the moment, Istanbul Agreement, in terms of uh, our struggle against uh, violence, is clearly indicated by the signature of our Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Davutoglu, with no reservation. And Turkey had been the first country that read, uh, uh, signed underneath the agreement agreement without any reservation. This is our position. We would like to eliminate all the reservations and we're working very hard in terms of the legal infrastructure and in terms of implementation. As I said, we have a very strong representation in our delegation and I would like to give the floor to them. My colleague from Ministry of Justice and from Ministry of uh, National Education, Statistics Agency, Health, Social Solidarity, uh, Directorate General, uh, they will uh, one by one take the floor. Ministry of Justice. I would like to greet uh, the members of the committee. I'm the Deputy Under Secretary from Ministry of Justice. My name is Sefa Mermerci. We have taken down uh, note of the questions. I will try to be very brief concerning the time limitations. Cons uh, are you providing training about rights of the child is one of the important questions. Yes, especially after 2005. There had been a prior activity before 2005, but especially after 2005, very serious training programs were organized and we are carrying out international cooperation work. Some have been finalized, some are still going on, especially together with UNICEF, uh, we have a 3 million 700 thousand euro budget project about juvenile uh, justice for children project as we call it there are many other projects that we're carrying out uh, with the law enforcement offices for example our national police organization has established units in order to work on uh, juvenile delinquency. We do have a special unit that we have established, uh, established within the prosecutor's office to work on the juvenile delinquency. We are planning to increase the number of those uh, special units in the prosecutor's uh, offices. And there are regular training programs provided to the judges and the prosecutors about juvenile justice. R uh, right at the moment, there are 19 juvenile heavy penalty courts and 84 
juvenile courts uh, and the number is still increasing there are new juvenile courts uh, to be established right at the moment 103 juvenile courts were established the only juveniles are being prosecuted there they are functional and we do have specialists working in those courts not only judges and the prosecutors but many uh, specialists and uh, reports are being prepared by social workers psychologists pedagogues they are assisting uh, the courts having contact with the families and with the children on one-to-one -one basis and their reports serve for the judgments uh, assist the judgments of the uh, courts and this is the first question the second question 17 years for boys and girls to get married and with a decree of court this can be decreased one uh, with regard to the issue, I think there's a there's an additional question here. We talk about s specialized training because I think you have here a specialized team in the area of ec education. Is there is there in your country a, a general training program at the university level or otherwise that provides basic basic training in the courts? Is there training provided in terms of the implementation of the provisions of the convention with regard to the rights of the child? And a, a colleague also asked a question with regard to training in the schools for students in the rights of the child. And that is, that is the question. Evet. Yes, uh, from the perspective of the Ministry of Justice, I can respond to your question. At the School of Law, uh, juvenile, uh, juvenile justice system is very popular uh, during the recent years. There are lots of academicians working on this topic, and many uh, important seminars are being organized at the university level in terms of violence against women, violence against children, many uh, academic work is uh, being carried out as well. And we do have a, a justice academy, as we call it. Uh, this academy is providing training for judges and the prosecutors. And on regular uh, basis, we're providing uh, training. Uh, I'm not quite sure about the question in terms of what type of training they, uh, they are receiving. Those people have been specifically trained at the university level, social workers, psychologists, pedago pedagogues. They are uh, specially educated uh, for those topics, and then they give their specialized views, and uh, the judges and the prosecutors take their views into consideration. The second uh, part of the question, in our national education curriculum for the children at the schools, we do have a special uh, course for that. Our friend coming from the Ministry of National Education will give you the details how uh, the curriculum is embedding the issue, but the Ministry of National Education will be dwelling upon the details. Can I proceed to the other question? So marriages at the age of 17. It is a topic that, has, uh, that is being debated in our country as well, uh, because we consider the uh, individual to be a child up to the age of 18. Uh, so why we are saying that uh, marriage age is 17? And there's a draft that was submitted to the General Assembly of the Turkish Parliament. Uh, this very same topic will be debated at the Turkish Parliament, at the General Assembly. We are waiting for the will of the Parliament to be expressed uh, the, as a result of the debates. But this is a physical development. In, cli in warm climates, physical development is taking place at an earlier age, but it is still waiting to be debated at the Parliament, at the General Assembly. Another question. Juveniles staying with the adults in the same prison environment. This is very important for us. Right at the moment, we have 2,197 uh, 
children as of last week. This week it dropped to 100, 2,120. And 241 of them are convicted children. 225 of them, they have received their punishment, but it is with the Court of Appeals. And we have 1,731 detainee children. So there are two parts in the system. The ones who are convicted are being transferred uh, to training centers at the status of a prison. The ones, the detainee ones, are being uh, kept in uh, the closed uh, prisons. In some small provinces, they are staying at the juvenile part of the general prison, but in no way a child at the age of 18 can stay with a younger child. Our main purpose is to avoid um, is to avoid different age groups getting intermingled, and we're taking measures for that. Around one third of those children are are staying in their rooms and the doors cannot be opened from inside and outside without his or her own good uh, will. Out of those 2,197 of those uh, children, one third of them are staying in their own individual rooms. So our plan is that uh, we would like to increase the capacity as well, improve the capacity to enable 2,000 200 children having their individual rooms, the locks being opened from inside and outside only with the will of the child with their own bathrooms inside. We had developed our plans and the designs of our uh, prisons that will be in this format. Some of them are at the project level, some of them are under construction. Uh, we do have a time bracket of two and a half years within which we will realize all juvenile convicts and all juvenile detainees will be able to stay in their separate rooms. So this uh, was the answer to that question. Children, ch Excuse me for interrupting you, sir, but I think you'd already moved on to another question because of the delay in the interpretation. I think you had finished with the issue of the detention of minors with with adults. I'm not sure if I really understood your answer. If there are in fact minors who are being held with adult prisoners in penitentiary facilities. You said that some are in reform institutions, some are in prisons, and that they have separate rooms. Some of them are in group cells. But what the committee would like to know today is whether or not in Turkey there are minors who are being held with adult prisoners. That is the question. Mr. Kotran had a question. Mr. Kotran had a question. Yes, excuse me, Chair, but I just wanted to go back to the explanation given on the age for marriage. Children in countries of the South, uh, I think a comment was made with regard to their development being uh, more rapid owing to the geographical lo location. I think this could be an argument in some countries that could be could be used to lower the age of criminal liability or to lower the age at which girls can marry. The idea that that in some regions children develop more quickly than children in other regions, I don't know if I don't know if that perhaps that covers uh, a number of different areas, uh, their psychological development, physical development, and what have you. I'm very happy to learn that we to know that we're having a discussion on the issue of age. And I would also 
I would, I would also like to note that it, it, Les filles, excuse it, it, uh, f From our perspective, uh, related with the physical and the psychological uh, psychological development we have changed our education system that is why now we're having four plus four plus four education system in order to avoid early marriages uh, we would like to keep our girls within the formal education formal basic education mandatory education uh, f up to a certain age to avoid girls uh, forced to get married at an earlier age uh, because of the climatic conditions geographic conditions that can't be an excuse for us it is not valid for M madam head of delegation I would like to remind you that I am the one who gives speakers the floor. The rapporteur was in the process of asking a question and had not yet finished asking that question. So if you would please allow the committee members to fully express themselves. If you would like the floor, I will happily give you the floor with, with all due respect. But I do. I, our session must be conducted in accordance with our rules of procedure. So I will again give the floor to Mr. Kotran so that he can complete his question, and then we will hear replies from the, rep, the member of the delegation from the Ministry of Justice, Mr. Kotran. Thank you very much, Chair. I will have some time to follow up on and to finish my question when we move on to the other clusters. But thank you very much for again uh, giving me the floor and the representative of the Ministry of Justice uh, could, uh, I'm happy if he would continue now. Sir, you have the floor, says the chair. I think there had been a miscommunication. 18 is a universal age. But there are some countries that this age would fit. Uh, there, it is the same thing for criminal, uh, for criminal liability as well. There are some countries who would accept 21 years of age or lower ages. Uh, every country may have their own justifications. And as the Madam uh, Minister had indicated, in our country, we are trying to eliminate this ages lower than 18. So our parliament is working on uh, the current age 17 and trying to improve it. But not for Turkey, but I was just trying to say that there are different uh, age groups valid for other countries. As for that reason, we I just wanted to clarify the situation that we are aiming and targeting age of 18. So the other question, I think I need to clarify this as well. In no way a minor is staying with an adult in any one of the prisons. There is no Thing like this in Turkey. In small provinces, there are some prisons where there is a juvenile part completely physically separated from the adult part. Some part is for women, some part is for juveniles. Physically, they're completely separated, even though it is on the same campus. No together staying of the juveniles with the adults. But we're trying to improve the system to make that every child will have their own single room. And we are grouping the juveniles according to their age groups. Not even ev all the juveniles are staying in the same part, but the juveniles are also grouped according to their age groups among themselves. In terms of the interrogation, uh, there was a question about the uh, security officers being a part of the interrogation of juveniles. It is by no means possible. 
in Turkey. By no means security forces can participate to the interrogation. The testimony of the juvenile is always taken directly by the prosecutor, and it is the special juvenile prosecutor. And within the framework of the new project we are developing, we are in, uh, furthermore developing this, the testimony of the child, especially when it comes to sexual abuse uh, related crimes. We want to take the testimony of the child only at once so that the child won't be damaged furthermore. So we have special equipped uh, rooms with video uh, recording system uh, furbished. So in our justice uh, system, uh, now we have these specially designated rooms whereby the testimony of the child is taken by the prosecutor and no security officer can ever participate there. And according to our criminal procedures law, a lawyer must be present for the interrogation of the child. And also, uh, according to another uh, article, the parents of the child can also be present during the interrogation and the testimony. And another thing is that, at any case, uh, a psychologist must be present when the child provides the testimony. So these are uh, already part of our criminal procedures law. We also uh, had other problems, which will also be answered by my colleagues. But in the Turkish Penal Code, we have uh, an article. Let me also provide information. It is always punished if you uh, uh, have ill treatment towards a person who is under your uh, upbringing, even if it's the parent, the, the, the person will be punished or sanctioned. This is in our law. If there is someone under your upbringing or if you are responsible of uh, raising, teaching, protecting, uh, accommodating someone, the discipline authority you have over this person, if it's uh, ill-used, then you will be sentenced to up to one year of imprisonment. So in our penal code, there is an article about this. Even if you are the parent of a child, even if you are the teacher of a child, you can never misuse this right of discipline. You can never ever impose corporal or physical uh, punishment. And what do we mean by this disciplinary authority? For instance, sometimes parents can punish their children by saying that you will not watch TV or you will not go out on the street. But this can be considered under the framework of the disciplinary authority of the parent. It can never be transferred into physical uh, violence or corporal punishment. And uh, teachers as well as parents are uh, covered by this law. Another question was about the first instance courts. Uh, do they also provide... Uh, the question on corporal punishment, as we've said, it's an issue that the committee asks of all states. I do understand that all forms of discipline are not punished. It is punishable. It's just corporal punishment. There's Obviously, a, a prohibition on a child wouldn't be of that type. What the committee wants to know is whether corporal punishment is explicitly prohibited at home. I don't think that is the case. In s the schools, it's apparently not. The practice f of corporal punishment is that forbidden, prohibited in the institutions. This is what Mrs. Mauras wanted to know. Um, Madam Minister, you have the floor. Well, with the recently enacted law on the protection of family and uh, combat against violence, the definition of violence was renewed, and it covers not only physical violence, but it also includes social violence, economic violence, and all the definitions made by the international community have been included in the definition of violence, including emotional violence, including children. But the penal code and the relevant article is not enough. Uh, so we have this complementary law newly enacted, which brings a very important legal framework. So our uh, combat against violence is co carried out on a multidimensional and comprehensive manner. Thank you. Thank you. So 
this, is this the law that of May 2012? Is this the law? Has it been adopted? Is it still a draft bill? I wonder if you could tell me where, whether this law on violence has already been adopted or is going to be. Thank you, Madam. You have the floor. Um, she did. Both the, the law on violence has been enacted. It's in force currently working and in practice also the infrastructure is being established monitoring centers are being constructed all over the country and we have child tracking uh, centers uh, that are being strengthened within the ministry of justice and the istanbul convention council of europe istanbul convention is being put into force uh, complementing the uh, articles of the code uh, you need to protect if you can't uh, protect uh, and prevent then what kind of measures will be taken. These are all under progress. What are going to be the responsibilities of different ministries? The Ministry of Family and Social Policies, what is the Ministry of Justice going to do? What is the Ministry of uh, Interior going to do? We have provided the infrastructure for these. Uh, all the uh, civilian uh, authorities are being trained currently, including the uh, governors and district governors. Can we continue? Yes, another question was about the first instance courts. Is the Convention on the Rights of the Child uh, implemented or taken into consideration uh, adequately in first instance courts? Of course it is the case. According to our legislation, according to our constitution, the internationally uh, approved uh, conventions uh, shall prevail compared to the domestic law. So they have the force of an article of the constitution. So the, in the first instance courts as well as the higher courts, because I guess there was a co uh, confusion. Uh, that's why this question was asked, because initially the conventions are implemented at the first instance court level. And at the first instance court level, the Convention on the Rights of the Child always prevails compared to domestic law and uh, legislation and it's being implemented and taken into consideration. Another question was about the ombudsmanship, child ombudsman. The parliament uh, worked on this and we have a colleague who also uh, participated in the parliamentary efforts, so he will be taking the floor to answer this. My name is Yusuf Solmaz Balo from the Ministry of Justice about the ombudsmanship and the value we attach to this institution as the uh, country, we had to amend the constitution. Within the framework of the constitutional amendment, we have prepared a draft bill which is currently being discussed at the parliamentary level in the relevant committee. And according to the plan, before the summer break of the parliament, we uh, are expecting this uh, bill uh, to be put into force. With this bill, first of all, our citizens, including foreigners, children, legal entities, when they have complaints about the functioning of the administration, uh, their complaints will be assessed and reviewed uh, by the new institution in the new system. And some instruments uh, are going to be provided to the ombudsman so that he will be able to function effectively. And the ombudsman, if uh, they identify some shortcomings about the functioning of the administration and if the shortcomings are not later on corrected, then there will be certain liabilities uh, on the administration and this process should be concluded as soon as possible, maximum in six months time the complaints should be uh, finalized, the, the decision about the complaints. Now, this is a question of great interest to us. 
we welcome the fact that you have this draft bill and the that you will soon have an ombudsman so questions that arise this ombudsman will there be a special unit within the ombudsman's office for children according to what i've understood it's an ombudsman that covers everything including children but will there be a specialized section within that office for children second will the ombudsman have local regional representatives or is it just one single national office third how will the children have direct access to the ombudsman and finally what is the coordination between this new institution which is going to be created and the existing institution the parliamentary committee on the implementation of these laws how what what is the different terms of references of the two institutions how will they interact uh, thank you very much mr chairperson first of all for the ombudsman to be able to work independently he will only be held liable towards the parliament and for the ombudsman to work effectively something in the organization should be uh, the uh, re requirement to follow up on uh, the developments in child law and to raise awareness in the field so that children will have access to the ombudsmanship uh, services, we have some action plans that are prepared and we are closely following up on this. And in this process especially, we will work with uh, schools and teachers. They have a lot of uh, responsibilities in terms of raising awareness. Uh, we will also include teachers and, uh, and schools. Another question was about the child victims. What kind of instruments are there available in the system? First of all, after 2005, according to our new legislation, uh, child victims are considered as children who need protection. And as they are considered as children who need protection, they are directly under the protection of the state. The child itself or the family of the child, the school surrounding of the child, the playmates of the child need to make sure that the child will be uh, least affected because of the crime uh, he was subjected to so they will be supported by these surroundings and uh, these people will also be trained so that the child will be affected the least in terms of criminal procedures the system is the following the child needs to go through uh, the court proceedings and the uh, judicial system as soon as possible so we have some instruments to make sure that the child is finished or done with the uh, all, with all these procedures as soon as possible and the most important instrument we have is that we have a rule a provision saying that the testimony of the child is taken only for once with assistance of an expert we uh, have visual audio visual recordings so never ever again the child uh, becomes a part of the criminal uh, proceedings or the uh, investigation again. I'm from the Ministry of Interior, Deputy Undersecretary Murat Koca. My best regards for everyone. I will try to listen, uh, answer to three of the questions addressed to my ministry and my colleagues will uh, go on. One was about the freedom of assembly. The age of uh, benefiting from the freedom of assembly, was it 12 or 15 years of age? In the previous law on associations, there was no provision for children 
establishing associations. However, in the newly established law that was put into force in 2000, there is a provision about children uh, forming associations. Children who have concluded the age of 15, who have mental capacities uh, in order to benefit from their social and cultural rights, protect their private lives, school life, education life, with the written assent or permission of their legal guardian, they can uh, establish associations or become members of the associations. For those children who are the age of 12, they can become a member of an association, but they can't become members of the board of directors of an association. So the difference is that if you are 15 years of age, you can both establish an association and become a member of their uh, executive boards. However, for those who are age of, uh, at the age of 12, they can only be members uh, of an association, but they cannot establish uh, associations. So with the new law, the children who are about 12 years of age also have this right to become a member of an association. The second thing about this question, how easy it is to make use of this uh, right uh, to assembly and form associations was the question. In our country, according to the law, uh, it, require, it is required to have at least seven people to uh, establish an association. And for the associations to be considered as legal entities, they need to uh, provide their bylaws uh, to the uh, directorates of associations at the provincial level, and they need to make uh, a statement. So it's very easy to establish an association in Turkey and be considered as an illegal entity. I don't know what is the situation in other countries, but another question was about the participation of children in decision-making mechanisms and the uh, child parliaments. Currently, we have the law on municipalities, and Article 76 uh, talks about the city councils. And under these city councils, we have different councils for women, youth, and children can be represented in these uh, specific councils. And the decisions taken here are taken on the agenda uh, of the municipal council during the first meeting after the decisions are made. So uh, the children can actually participate in decision mechanisms through these uh, councils. I would like to give the floor to Madam Lee, who is asking for extra information. Madam Lee. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. S excuse me for interrupting uh, you. Uh, I, I just have an, a quick follow up. This law of association, does that, co does that collide or conflict with the law concerning meetings and demonstrations? Because that law uh, has an age of 19 to uh, form an organization for outdoor meetings. And I'm wondering if these two laws uh, conflict with each other. Thank you. Yes, one is about the children establishing associations to express their opinions, and the other one is about meetings and demonstrations. And the law on meetings and demonstrations was actually enacted in 1973, as far as I remember, and... Yes, you can consider meetings and demonstrations as a means of expressing your opinion, but I think these are different things. Uh, this is not directly related to one another. Freedom of assembly and uh, meetings and demonstrations are different. And the third thing is about the birth registration of children. You asked if the 6% of registration rates could be, uh, non-registration rates could be lowered to zero or 2%, for instance. We are uh, very ambitious with our 
birth registration system. It's totally on a digital uh, basis. And all the demographic informations of the citizens are kept on an electronic environment in terms of education, security, banking, social security. We have the physical infrastructure to be able to use all the demographic information for different sectors, and the address information is also now added to the demographic information system. Our state is attaching particular importance for the registration of children. Uh, we have one month of uh, time. If during one month children are not registered, uh, then they, the parents will have to pay uh, a fine of about 30 US dollars. Uh, we need to make, we want to make sure that children are not left outside the system. That's why we brought this sanction if you don't register your child. Let me give you an example on real time basis. In 957 centers throughout Turkey, we can see on a real-time basis all the difference between death and birth uh, figures. For instance, yesterday, before we left Turkey, I got the figures beginning of 2012, as of 30th of May, uh, noontime. The information we had was that we had uh, 555,000 565 people. So I'm very proud to say that we can give you the figures, the numbers, even on a real-time basis. And the Turkstat, the Statistics Institute, they announce the official figures annually, every year. However, as the state, we are in a position to know our exact uh, population on a real-time basis. So for someone to be not to be registered to birth, uh, it's almost impossible they will be isolated uh, from the society. So uh, it's not in percentages, but it's uh, per thousand. So uh, according to the current uh, figures, we have made great uh, progress. And starting from the beginning of 2012, the social security uh, system is also made universal if one person is to benefit from social security services or health services they need to have a birth registry because all the data and any any data you need actually forces you to have a birth uh, registration and the children under the responsibility of child services and child pro social services and child protection agency they need to be uh, notified to the relevant authorities by the workers of the institution and if your parents are not uh, notifying you or registering you the institutions will register you so all the children uh, being accommodated in these institutions are actually registered through the uh, directors of the institutions what is of concern to us other than of course welcoming the progress when we compare to 2001 this is a good result but 6% means that you still have 30,000 children who are not registered and as you said this means children who are on the margins or marginalized so what can be done more than you already have to take these 30,000 children who are at risk what everybody would like is that this could drop to zero so what can be done what more can be done is this due to the fact that not everywhere is there this awareness of the need to register or is this certain regions which are particularly remote where people can't do it or are there costs which are which mean that they cannot register or is it a problem of minorities Six percent 
six i did not quote the six percent in the question there was this figure of six percent we I understood the question whether or not you can drop it from 6% to 2%. I believe it is a very minor, it is a very minor uh, number. And I believe it is only two in 1,000 that who are not uh, yet registered. And those are the groups, for example, they are nomads living at the top of the mountains and uh, carrying out their lives by taking care by animal husbandry maybe while they are migrating from one place to another they may not be able to get their children registered but even though these are nomads living at the top of the mountains at the moment that they need to receive health services they need to get their children registered and there is social assistance provided to those uh, people and to receive that social assistance benefits their children need to be registered. For that reason, the system wants them to be registered in any way. Thank you. I would like to greet everyone with respect. I'm the department head, Arjan Tashtekin from Ministry of Interior. Uh, ill treatment uh, or uh, torture uh, within the framework of law enforcement offices and degrading uh, behavior. So I would like to explain how we are institutionally structured, what type of monitoring mechanisms and what is the legal structure we have. United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child uh, within the framework of the best interest of the child in 2001, within the framework of the law enforcement agencies, we have established juvenile police units that exist in 81 provinces and in 752 sub-provinces. So let me continue with the next point. In the Turkish Penal Code that was enacted in 2005, especially Article 94 and 95, says that if torture carried out by a public servant, especially against a juvenile, would be an aggravating factor and will result in imprisonment between 8 to 15 years. If ill treatment is carrying, uh, will be carried out against a child, this will be an aggregating factor. According to the Child Protection Law 5395, Article 15, clearly defines that the prosecution carried out by juvenile delinquents should be carried out by juvenile republic prosecutors. As can be understood from the statement, in our country, child, children under the uh, juvenile delinquents under the age of 18 cannot be interrogated uh, by Norm, uh, by law enforcement officers. It can only be done by juvenile prosecutors with specialized, um, with specialized um, experts. And when the juveniles are detained, they can only be apprehended in the juvenile units that I have just described. In the places where there are no juvenile units, the juveniles should be kept in separate from the other adults. I would like to emphasize the fact that even the law indicates it with this wording, we do have juvenile units in every province and in every sub-province. So it is practically not the case that there are no juvenile units in, uh, in the provinces and in sub-provinces. We have that in every province and sub-province. And concerning the detained children, while carrying out the procedures, there's no way handcuffs, chains, or similar, uh, similar uh, devices being used uh, with children. In 2005, we do have a bylaw in, uh, explaining apprehension, detention, and uh, custody. Immediately when the child is apprehended, uh, the parents or the legal guardian should be informed. And even though the child will not ask for legal counsel, 
he or she has to be provided with a legal counsel. One of the most important provisions is that when the child is detained by the law enforcement officers and discharged, the child should go through medical examination. And uh, throughout the process and the medical examination, the uh, law enforcement officers should not be in uh, the place of medical examination and the report prepared by the experts cannot be seen by the law enforcement officers. It should be placed in a sealed envelope. In our country, law number 4643, uh, Human Rights uh, Directorate under the Prime Ministry was established. And in 81 provinces, human rights monitoring units were established within which representatives of the bar associations and the NGOs are working. Still, this is not enough for us. Right at the moment, we are working on a, a oversight mechanism for the law enforcement agencies, and we have submitted the draft to the uh, parliament. The most important property of this draft to enable a faster and a more transparent functioning of the law enforcement activities. And if there would be any crimes, uh, alleged crimes committed by the law enforcement officers, uh, all sorts of procedures should be carried out in a central manner, in a transparent manner, without the involvement of the related law enforcement party, so that there would be an unbiased follow-up of the claims. So when this draft is to be enacted by the Parliament, Gendarmerie General Directorate, Coast, uh, Coast Guard and the police force uh, will be within the scope of the law to be enacted for the oversight mechanism of the law enforcement officers. So uh, in our country, all the procedures uh, and Every, um, every action to be taken relating the juveniles are being carried out by the juvenile police. 1,500 of the police force have been trained, and uh, the training is 58 hours, three hours juvenile justice system, why it is required, six hours child and child development, three hours uh, concerning the Convention on the Rights of the Child. In total, 50, uh, 57 hours of training is being provided. Also, uh, while uh, investigating child abuse cases, specialized personnel should uh, carry out those investigations and specific training had been provided to the relevant uh, parties. I don't want to be giving, uh, taking much of your time, but we do have child protection training programs, uh, sexual abuse programs, uh, training programs, and 5,298 of our staff members of the security forces, uh, the police forces have been uh, trained. 5,100 police officers have been trained in that regard. In our country, in, for the prevention of torture and ill treatment, we are carrying out twinning projects within the European Union programs. For example, interrogation techniques to be improved and interrogation rooms to be improved. We've started the project in 2006. And we have established 30 uh, interrogation rooms according to the standards. Also, there had been a support uh, program for uh, Turkey's compliance. We had uh, projects that we've carried out with Netherlands to improve uh, institutional capacity of the police organization in terms of human rights and improving the rights of the victims has been another training, uh, twinning project that we have carried out. The most important issue that I was trying to describe is that right at the moment at the Turkish Grand National Assembly, uh, a law enforcement oversight body is now trying to be established, which will be completely independent from the law enforcement. Thank you very much, sir. You've given us a great deal of information.
but I think this afternoon we could, we have heard the essential points, but we could add to that later on this afternoon. I will now uh, suspend the session so that we can continue with the next cluster of questions. A number of questions have yet to be, have yet to be replied to, and in the afternoon, uh, you will have uh, you will be able to the delegation will be able to do so having had some, some time over lunch to to prepare we are going to move on to the next part of the convention family environment and the areas of health education and special protection measures i now give the floor to the two rapporteurs uh, mr cotran you have the floor thank you chair i would like to begin uh, by touching on the issues related to children and the family environment. I didn't receive much information on children born to parents out of wedlock. We know that there are a number of children in, in, in institutions and our committee has observed this, we included this in our observations of 2001. The number of children in institutions remains quite high. And with regard to alternative uh, m protection measures for children who have been uh, who have been abandoned, can you tell us if adoptions are carried out in your country? What no what is what are the numbers? We didn't receive uh, much information in that regard. My question uh, is related to child labor and children's employment. A number of areas are excluded uh, from the provisions in the law to that effect, including uh, under Article 4 of 22 May 2003 with regard to children working in the agricultural sector, in the agricultural sector. A number of, a high percentage of children work in the agricultural sector and on that basis, and also a number of children work in the area of handicrafts and in the rural sector. We would like to know what measures have been taken by the state party to ensure that children in those sectors are protected against exploitation, economic exploitation, which persists in the agricultural sector in, particu in particular, and also in the furniture industry. I think one of our colleagues uh, referred to this, uh, particular referred to the ILO convention and the recommendations contained in that that convention. The other issue is as children seeking asylum and refugee children. The committee takes note of law 5510, which was adopted in 2008, which includes uh, stateless persons and asylum seekers in the list of those benefiting from social insurance and universal health care coverage. Nevertheless, the committee is concerned with regards to the limits uh, that the limitations to the Convention on, on Refugees of 1951 in terms of the scope of act, ap application being limited in Turkey. It is limited to those individuals from European countries. We are also concerned on the numerous about the numerous challenges that asylum-seeking children are facing and also with regard to the difficulties they are facing in obtaining residency permits. And also there are issues related to, uh, to basic social services such as health and education. Merci. Madame al please. Madame al you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, on the issue of health and health services, what measures have been taken and what resources are being made available to reduce rural and urban regional and local disparities in basic health and nutrition outcomes and to strengthen the family medicine system and make public health provision more comprehensive? The Ministry of Health closed the Family and Planning Department a few months ago. What's a replacement? And uh, although there is um, the Department of Women, but what about the family and children? Um, 
to youth policy, health policy, and education policy specifically include among their aims the promotion of healthy behavior and psychological resilience in young people and, and provision of support such as counseling or rehabilitation in young people experiencing difficulties? If so, how is the aim put in practice and how is implementation monitored? What developments have been made to target youth and sexual reproductive health? On the issue of children and disability, what steps have been taken to provide sufficient support to families and ensure that all children, including children with disability, can live and be raised in family environments and community? And to eliminate the institutionalization of children by building up community-based services, including welfare, welfare benefits and social assistance. What steps have been provided by the government to provide inclusive education? And is the definition of inclusive education incorporated in the law? How does information about seeking help and making complaint against perpetrators made available to children with disability regarding harmful practices and exploitation? What measures are taken if a member of the authority fails to protect? Are offenders convicted or punished? Uh, we have been notified that some cases the authorities allowed officers accused of abuse to remain on duty du during their trial. On the issue of education, um, Your Excellency, you mentioned a new educational reform on 4x4, which is a four three sets of four years. Um, did the minority, are they, are they taking into, into account? Did you consider the drop, dropout rate of minorities? And what plans do the Ministry of National Education have to upgrade teacher training programs in line with recent goals, methods, and practices of education system. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Merci. Je vais Thank you very much. I give the floor to Madame Herzog. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Very warm welcome to the delegations on speaking for the first time. And thank you for the very detailed and uh, important response so far. There are three areas I would like to tackle. First of all, the early years. I'm wondering what kind of provisions are there for the children between the age of zero and three years old? So what kind of early childhood um, provisions are uh, available? What is happening with those children whose parents are working or where the mother cannot take care uh, of the child during the day? Or what kind of policies are in place to support those poor and isolated uh, communities where the families would need extra support to take better care of their children. As far as the uh, early uh, care provisions are concerned, I, I would like to learn more about your kindergarten or preschool system. As far as we could see from the report, there are very strong efforts made to increase the attendance of the preschool uh, system, even uh, considering um, some special provisions for a, a, a year before the school, but I'm wondering what, ab what about the earlier years. We know that um, early uh, child care and education is the best uh, preventive measure to avoid the later delays and uh, lack of school readiness. So I'm wondering whether you are providing any catch-up services already at this early age and not only later in the sixth, seventh grade to avoid uh, early dropout and uh, early school leaving. Have you considered any CCT programs similar to your school programs, cash, conditional cash transfer, to encourage parents to take their children to early childhood provisions? And what about those families who cannot afford the current services? Because from your report, we can see that uh, although the service itself is free, but parents have to contribute financially in many ways to the service provision. So what about those families who cannot afford this contribution and how are you supporting those families? Another area uh, is what my colleague has already mentioned briefly, uh, uh, reproductive health. 
As far as uh, we are informed, there was a closure of uh, Mother Child Family Planning Center. I'm wondering why was it closed and what kind of other provisions are there to ensure that family planning is provided uh, and people, uh, parents, um, family members can make an informed consent and avoid unwanted pregnancies. And the last question is regarding child abuse and violence against children. I'm just wondering uh, what kind of measures are taken to avoid not only abuse and violence in the family, but also institutional abuse and system abuse when the authorities or those who should protect children are violating the rights of the children. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Hidden. Agriculture has already been mentioned, but um, an additional problem to that of the work itself is that those children are often all also migrant within Turk Turkey, that they migrate annually with their families or sometimes without their families to work in regions growing cotton, hazelnuts and so on and they live under difficult living or primitive living conditions and uh, uh, also the children are quite small in those uh, uh, circumstances. So I wonder um, what are you doing to prevent that kind of uh, um, migration by children which also means that they don't have access to education during that time for instance. Um, another question is with regard to children living and working on the streets. Uh, you mentioned that you, you have some programs in order to reduce um, the number of children living on the streets and also to improve the conditions. So I would like to, to know something more about those programs and uh, um, what you are doing both to, to uh, I mean, you mentioned some centers, I think. Um, Yes, you, you mentioned some uh, children and youth centers uh, to give them a healthier uh, environment. But if you could explain something more about those centers and also what you do in order to prevent children from ending in the streets and rather to stay in their communities. Thank you. Mr. Cardona, you have the floor, sir. Gracias, Thank you, Chair. I just wanted to request further details on two issues. I think we've already discussed them a little bit, but I, I would like more information. First, uh, children with disabilities. We received some information, and on that basis, we are wondering what kind of early detection system, what kind of early identification system there is to identify children with such dis such disabilities in children and we also and in particular between the ages of uh, one and three years we have also heard a number of alarming reports about children with disabilities or psychological problems or mental problems and the institutions in which they are kept. And we are wondering what type of system or control system is in place. What kind of treatment to, to oversee what kind of treatment these children are, are receiving in these institutions. Third, with regard to children with disabilities, there's an issue of inclusive in, of education. There's an there is an annual increase in the number of children being ho in, housed in special, specialized institutions. But we were wondering if there was also a corresponding increase in the number of children receiving uh, inclusive education. Reference was also made to specialized classrooms in ordinary schools. Is there a special policy in ordinary, ordinary classrooms for inclusive education for children with disabilities? Another issue I'd like to raise 
is one that was raised also by the, my co-rapporteur. Refugee children. I think it's a very timely issue and a very important one as well. There are thousands of Syrian children who are currently in Turkish territory who are fleeing the situation in, in their country. What measures are being adopted to, in regard to those, those Syrian children on Turkish ter in Turkish territory? What, what me measures are being taken to guarantee their right to education and health as, as refugees? Thank you very much. Merci, Thank you, Mr. Kontrafan. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. My question will be concerning with child abuse neglect and sale of children. Uh, what mechanism has been set up to monitor the living conditions of children while they are in care of the families? Under the Convention's Article 5 and 18, parents has duties and responsibilities to promote the welfare and safeguarding of their children. If the parents do not function properly, what intervention and service shall be provided to the parents and the child? How does the state parties detect the sale, trafficking, and abduction of children? In case that the parents involved with sale of children, what liability shall be borne on them? And what measures shall be taken to reintegrate the child's victim back to the family with the parents in which the parent involves with sale of children. Thank you very much. Merci, Monsieur. Thank you. Mr. Pollard, please, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have two issues to raise, uh, partly covered with my colleague, but from a, maybe another dimension. That is Article 18. In the State Party report, a lot of e effort can be seen that government has really done a lot to support the family. It's why it includes education, financial, economic, and other support. Now, my question still is, what plans does the government have in scaling up services for parents, including allocation resources, especially for the less educated, because these are the, the sectors which still remain behind, and in less developed regions? Has the government set up any targets, for example, that you do estimate by this time we would have done this? What I'm saying here is that a lot has been done, but sectorial and areas, this pocket still seem to remain behind. The other issue is on Article 31 of the Convention. Uh, Madam Excellency, we believe that all rights are equal and indivisible. And this Article 31, therefore, we take it as serious as any other article. That is the right to play, leisure, recreation, and cultural and art artistic activities. Still, as I, I can see uh, from your report, uh, your government has done so much in this area. However, some gaps remain, and this makes me pose the following question. One, what can you comment on the issue raised to the effect that the activities and the facilities provided for these rights, that's the right to play and others, a limited and relatively small number of children benefit from it. The other issue here is that the concept of free time in your country is not so well developed, and parents may put <laughs> pressure on children to study excessively for examination achievements or academic results, and this affects the enjoyment of Article 31. Lastly, there's also the issue of the gender perspective on this Article 31, that while much improvement is given to the boys, the girls seem not to, the, the, the state seem not to have done enough for the girls as well to enjoy, to, 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 to enjoy the rights enshrined under Article 31. That is the right to play and leisure and recreation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Merci. Thank you very much. Madame Wishmani. You have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I just have some uh, questions, which uh, I think some of my colleagues also have uh, 
raised but um, a different dimension. I think the issue of disabled children has been mentioned. I just want to know uh, in terms of, uh, because the numbers are high, whether there are screening uh, tests and surveillance undertaken in your health system, which is uh, fairly widespread with regard to the early detection of disabilities. And uh, also, uh, perhaps there may be factors like consanguity, which is contributing to disability, because if it is detected early, measures can be undertaken to minimize uh, the impact on uh, childhood development and attainment of milestones. Uh, my second question relates to maternal mortality, particularly in the rural areas. I know maternal mortality is l relatively low, but it's low most in urban areas, whereas in rural areas, uh, and it is high, and it could also relate to lower levels of education, early marriages in the girls, among the girls. Uh, my next question pertains to uh, breastfeeding. Uh, uh, the reports we have indicate that uh, not more than about 39% of mothers uh, initiate breastfeeding early, although there's a large number of institutional deliveries, and uh, the figures really decline. Uh, and this could have an impact on uh, the high level of malnutrition in babies. Uh, so uh, what, what, do you, uh, what action do you take with regard to the breastfeeding code? I think there is a, is a, a co international code on infant formula. Is it being controlled? Is advertisements uh, uh, being uh, undertaken without any control, regulation, free samples given to hospitals. I think hospitals have been declared baby friendly, but uh, uh, are these hospitals being monitored in terms of the indicators? And uh, what about working women? Are they entitled to maternity leave? I think this is a very important issue where uh, malnutrition is concerned. Uh, my next question uh, relates to programs. Uh, do you have programs on mother-to-child transmission of HIV AIDS, preventing HIV AIDS uh, taking place in, uh, uh, through mother-to-child transmission? And also the programs you have for young people, adolescents, I think this was mentioned by a colleague, uh, life skills programs for young people with a special emphasis on uh, sexually transmitted uh, diseases. And finally, uh, there was a report, which I'm not sure the, about the authenticity of this report, uh, uh, that uh, there are some facilities where children have been uh, administered uh, what is called electroconvulsive therapy in terms of control. Uh, this is, I think, a fairly serious type of uh, treatment to administer for for children, it's not even actually used in adults. And I just want to know, is, is this correct? Is there any truth in these allegations? Uh, and what kind, of uh, what kind of disciplinary measures are undertaken in institutions uh, where sometimes children are incarcerated? And uh, uh, is there some kind of monitoring going on uh, uh, of such institutions in terms of uh, certain unethical practices? Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Gaston, you have the floor. Merci. <coughs> Merci, Monsieur. Thank you, Chair. The area of juvenile justice was addressed during the first part of our dialogue today, and we have received a num a, quite a, a large amount of interesting information. But I would like to request some clarification and ask some additional questions. We heard this morning that some delinquent children were placed in rehabilitation centers, while others are remain in prison. Could you exp could the delegation explain, please, what the distinction is here, or is it contingent on the type of crime committed? We also heard that there are specialized prosecutors addressing juvenile uh, delinquency and children involved of those cases are there also are there also judges who are specialized in this area we also talked about the age of criminal li liability at uh, being uh, 12 years of age 
Is this universally applied? Do you expect to adjust that age in the, in the short or medium term? In prison, do delinquent children receive uh, re-education or reinsertion types of programs? And is it that contingent on the length of their sentence? Are there alternative sen sentences? In other words, other than prison terms? Thank you. you Thank you very much. We are about to suspend our session for the morning. I have two speakers on my list who would like to ask questions. And they will do so at 3 o'clock. Madame Edu and Madame Lee. And we will resume our session at 3 p.m. with answers from the delegation. And this will give the delegation time to prepare some of their responses. In regard to for the members of the committee, we will have a focus group at 1 p.m. Uh, to discuss the general comment that we've been drafting. That will be at, four, at 2 p.m. and we will then hear a presentation in advance of our session on Monday morning. And good afternoon to all and see you at 3 p.m.